Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Uh, we are in, we were going through the book of Philippians. Now we're moving into the last and final chapter. And uh, therefore, my b- b- brethren, dearly beloved and long for, for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord. Now, notice Paul says here, uh, the word crown here is a Greek word not referring to like a diadem, like a kingly crown, but a wreath that would fade, except in his case, the joy is, is, is and it means a, it's like a victor's crown. It's like, the, you know, uh, they went, they ran the, the, uh, the, the decathlon they won, so they got the wreathy crown thing there. That's what this is. And so it's, it's the champion's crown. So Paul says that you're my joy and my crown. You're serving the Lord. You're being in the kingdom is my crown of victory. Okay, all right, so it's not, it's not a kingly front crown, hallelujah, in that sense. Uh, I beseech Yodius and beseech Synthiki that they be of the same mind in the Lord. Now, apparently, these two women were having cat fights in the church and couldn't get along. All right? So Paul said, now Paul could have commanded them, straighten up, but he begged them. I beg you, both of you, be of the same mind in the Lord. See, if we get, see, I want to tell you something. You want to get, get church issues straightened out, everybody get the same mind as the Lord. I say everybody get the same mind as the Lord. You'll straighten out all the church junk. Yeah, but you don't know what they did. It doesn't matter. See, when you've got, uh, you got the mind of the Lord and you're willing to, to yield to one another, and you're willing to love, and you're willing to, you know, uh, lay down your life, you, you do away with the problems. Amen. I can think of issues in, in, in the years past in our church that if people had just walked with the mind of the Lord, we wouldn't have had the problems. We had people leaving. They would, they would have just gotten it straightened out by having the mind of the Lord. God can do more in the atmosphere of you saying, hey, look, I love you. Uh, Forgive me for what uh, either I did do or what you perceived I did. Sometimes it's just a perception and you didn't do anything. But you see, if you'll come up and just say, hey, I'm sorry. Because my actions caused that. I'm sorry. If we can do that and get in the same mind of the Lord, preferring your brother above yourself, well, straighten stuff out. That's what Paul, Paul said the answer here was not, you know, uh, to have a knockdown drag out. And as a matter of fact, apparently they've been having that. I've had enough of that. Just get the same mind as the Lord. And I entreat thee um, also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my favorite fellow laborers whose names are in the, in the book of life. Now, the one characteristic these women had was they were faith, they worked with Paul and helped him in the ministry. So it wasn't that they were evil dogs. They were just having cat fights. Maybe they were jealous and one got more recognition. Who knows what happened? Except Paul said, could you straighten it out? I beg you. He was begging them, please get this straight. You know why? Because it, one reason that we, it, we need to get it straight is it is detrimental to the church when the strife is going on. It hurts the church. Everybody say it hurts the church. Paul wrote to the church of Corinth and said, I hear there are divisions and strife among you. Some says I'm a Paul, some says I'm a Paulus, you know, you know, and this one and that one. And we get all this junk going on in the church. Hello? And, uh, and, and because you don't get it straightened out, it causes problems. Now, when he says here, uh, I entreat uh, the also true yoke fellow, the word yoke fellow is also the same Greek word for the proper name, Suzukas. So we, there's been a lot of debate historically in the church fathers and interpretation, whether he was actually asking another person in the church to actually get, intervene into this. Or if it was just a general statement there. The King James translated it as true yoke fellow. But that Greek word is a proper name for Suzukas. Suzukas. Not to be confused with Suzuki the car. 
All right? But so Zucas, hallelujah. What can I say, Ben? Hallelujah. And um, Clement and other, and so them and Clement and other individuals not only helped Paul in the ministry, but their names were known to God. So he's asking them, intervene. Help, help these women get this mess straightened out. Why? You don't need, listen, you don't need to be coming to church sitting over here going, I ain't talking to them. And them sitting over there, well, I ain't talking to them. And y'all sitting in church, I ain't talking to each other. And expect the Holy Ghost to move. Expect the Holy Ghost to show up and minister life. Expect to get answers from him. See, we can't have that in the church. Paul was begging them, get this thing straightened out. Now, the next verse is, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. One of the main themes of this letter is the joy of the Lord. And Paul's saying rejoice in the Lord. Your joy is going to come from God. Everybody say, my joy comes from God. It does not come from your Cadillac. Or your Beamer or your whatever. You know, your, your extra house at the beach. Things and possessions can bring a happiness, but that happiness can, can fleet. Joy is a state of the Spirit and also part of the fruit of the Spirit. That's happiness is not one of the fruit of the Spirit. Joy is. Okay? And so you can get happy. And, that's, and there's nothing wrong with being happy about a new car. I like getting new cars. I tell you right now, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like looking around and thinking, man, when I get a little extra money, I want to go get me a Fiat Spider 2000 or 124 75 or newer. Um, they had the different bumpers. The old 124s had the bumpers attached to the car. In 75, they went to the new regulation with the five mile power bumpers. They're a little nicer looking. Uh, find me one that's been restored. I test drove one last year. They had over here in one of these car places. It, the engine had been restored. The body hadn't. But um, I'm like, man, if I had an extra five grand sitting in the bank, it'd be sitting in my driveway. God, let me test drive it. I took it out for about 20 minute, 25 minute test drive. I didn't miss a gear. He said, when you drove off the lot, you looked like you knew what you were doing. I'm thinking, yeah, I did, pal. I knew where. <laughs> All thing was missing was the eight track tape sticking out the front, and I had to dodge it to get it up in the fifth. <laughs> When I put my eight track in, it stuck out too far. So when I went up to go in the fifth, I had to take my fingers off and use the palm to push it up in the fifth. And then pull it back, reach down below, pull it back. You know, that was, that was happy, but it wasn't lasting. Why? It's fleeting. See, possessions aren't, won't bring joy. Okay? Because they fleet. I mean, you know, let's face it. You go get the brand new, if we go get a brand new car, brand, I mean brand new. Now, I ordered the Spider 2000 in 1979, and uh, when they, they, they uh, shipped it in, and the port was in Wilmington, and they had 300 miles on it when they got it up to, to Greenville. I think, I think my guy went down and, and rode it around a little bit. Yeah. You know? But, I mean, just 300 miles, smelled new, had the new all over it, just new. Yeah. You know? New wears off. Someone go to the parking lot, park, somebody dingles it. <laughs> Are you here? Yeah. You know, you ride down the road, and a rock comes up and hits the windshield. All that kind of stuff. You know, all, all that stuff. New wears off. But see, joy from the Lord doesn't wear off. Why? That's a spiritual th- force. That's a spiritual thing. Amen? And, and we could constantly renew that, and it'd be fresh and new all the time. You got to go get your car painted again. You got to get the leather re up. All that stuff you got to get done to it. Now, Jeff would be glad to help you out. He'll detail it right on up, won't you, brother? Make it, make, it look, look, make it look spick and span. But Paul says, rejoice in the Lord. Let, you know, get back. See, don't let trying to find external things cause you to have the joy that only the Lord can bring to you. So Paul says, rejoice what? Let's get spiritual. Let's get internal. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say to you, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men, all men, all men. The Lord is at hand. Um, actually, here, what, what Paul's talking, you know, he, could be, he is really probably referring to the term Maranatha, which is, O oh Lord, come, instead of just, you know, the Lord is at hand. The old Lord, and actually, instead of saying the Lord's at hand, he's saying, Lord, come. Like, like John, remember John said, even so come, Lord Jesus. See, the church, even in our state of want, wanting to plan, wanting to live, wanting to do, wanting this, all that, our cry should still become Lord Jesus. Not to escape, but remember that old song? Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. That I sing forever of his saving grace. Remember that song? 
Who, who remembers that song? Okay. Um, I don't remember the name of the song. That, that's, the, that's the chorus. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Let us sing forever of his saving grace. Blender's going to look for it. Hallelujah. Might not find it, but anyway. Bill, do you remember that song? Oh, oh I want to see him. All right. Praise the Lord. There we go. Oh, I want to see him. There we go. So it's an old public domain song. Uh, that's not the chorus, but there you go. Hallelujah. Oh, I want to see him. We should be desiring and looking forward to seeing the Lord. Can you say amen? There to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory. Let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Hallelujah. See, having the, we should as Christians, are you here? Like Paul, Maranatha, oh, come Lord. There should be a desire to, be, to see the Lord. Now, you don't stop doing the Word of God. You don't stop confessing. You don't stop witnessing. But there, the, every believer should have a desire. Paul said, I'm at a stretch between two. Remember that? He said, having a desire to be with the Lord, to depart and be with the Lord, which is far greater. But to abide in the flesh is needful, so I'm staying. Well, he wanted to go home. I remember... Um, um, Back in 1982, we went back to Alumni Week. I graduated in 1981. Jamie and I uh, drove back out to Tulsa in uh, uh, May of 19, May, April, April of May, end of April, early May 1982. And the week before Alumni Week, back, back then we used to have Alumni Week as a separate event. Um, Vicki Jamison's nephew, um, uh, Greg Smith, passed away. And he was only like 25. He'd been on Brother, the original singing group that traveled with Brother Hagen out of Rama called Faith's Creation. Wyatt Brown was with that group. Patsy Bierman, now Caminetti, uh, was with that group. Um, and, and they, they traveled with Dad Hagen and, you know, and, and sang. And Greg was in that. And, uh, but Greg was Vicki Jane. Her, her brother was Sam Smith, who pastored churches up in New England. And, um, and, and then Greg was his son. And Greg, uh, and I, I, Greg was a wonderful guy. Just a, just a precious brother in the Lord. Uh, I'd gotten to know him a little bit when I was out at Rama. He, he had already graduated, but I got to know him some. He's just a, just a great, great guy. As a matter of fact, when the girls were at Rama, they lived in the Greg Smith uh, Memorial Housing at Rama. This is the apartments across the street uh, from Rama. They renamed that to, uh, to honor him after he passed away. Well, um, we, we came back out, and, and of course, you know, there was a lot of talk. I mean, Greg's a young guy. He just died in his sleep. And everything, and uh, it was just kind of newly married. I don't, I don't think he'd been married too long. And uh, but what, one of the things they said was the last few uh, m uh, several months, and really the last few weeks of his life, he got to talk about heaven all the time when he was preaching. Got to talk about how much he wanted to see the Lord, how much he wanted to go home and see the Lord. Well, they got what he wanted. Brother Hagan addressed, addressed us at the alumni meeting, and, you know, he said, I, I, I went to my room, and I, I was hurting. I said, Lord, I'm hurting. I, I'm just going to call a spirit back. He said, the Lord said, no. Didn't tell him anything else. He said, why, why? The secret thing belongeth to the Lord. Okay? And so what, what we, the only thing we were able to figure out was he got talking about heaven so much, he got to looking over into heaven, he just took off. Because he, he just got to preaching and talking about heaven. Well, I believe we should want to see the Lord. I mean, I mean, are you here? We got a job to do here, but I, I mean, it should be our heart's desire to be with the Lord, to see the Lord. Amen. Not recoil from it, but to just to look forward to the day. Hallelujah. Whether we, we, we pass on through long life and we finish our course, or if the Lord comes back before we get that age and we have the rapture of the church or the catching away of the saints or whatever you want to call it, hallelujah, there should be a desire to see him and be with him. Amen. Glory to God. He that is joined to the Lord as one spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So um, the Lord is at our, oh, come, Lord. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Um, praise the Lord. Paul is teaching us here on how to um, walk in the peace of God, know the peace of God. The first step is rejoice in the Lord. Everybody say rejoice in the Lord. The second one is 
through prayer. You rejoice in the Lord, you pray. Now, there are, there are different words for prayer here. The, the, uh, he said through um, prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. So we have here the first word prayer is, is a Greek word that means to be um, just prayer in general. Now, we're not talking about flipper, silent prayer. We're talking about actually communicating with God. Hello? Growing up Pentecostal, we used to say, how many, how many requests do we have today? And people say, well, brother, pastor, remember so-and-so. Brother, would you remember? I've, I've got this going on, da, da, da. How many unspoken requests do we have? Everybody goes, mm. And we pray for the unspoken request. Ever heard the term oxymoron? Which is two things that are diametrically opposed to each other put together that don't make any sense. Unspoken request is an oxymoron. How can you have an unspoken request? I've said it before. Drive out of here tonight. Go across the street to Burger King. Go to the window. And they say, may I help you? They say, I have an unspoken order. And see what they do. Now, here's the thing. Now, I get a little upset when I go through the drive-thru and I get, get down, home, down the road to home and my order's not right. But if you go and give them an unspoken order and go through and they give you something and you pay for it, you ain't got no room to talk. Because you didn't, you, you didn't tell them what you wanted. They can give you anything. Hello? Praise the Lord. So we have prayer, the, the general type of prayer. Supplication means special time. I, 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 this, I, it was like a revelation to me because I've always kind of supplication. What, what, how does that differ from intercession? It's a special time of need. So we, we come together and say, um, you know, all of a sudden we have somebody in the church that has a, a, has a physical issue and we need to come together and pray. Well, we're not, we're not interceding so much as we're supplicating. We begin to pray for them. It's a special time. There's a, need, there's a need that's arisen, and we need to just come together and pray about that. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then he said, uh, so we have sub times of supplication. So we're going to pray, general prayer. We're going we're to supplicate. Thanksgiving is a Greek word meaning we look back to previous answers in prayer in which God helped us in similar situations. Oh, Lord, thank you. Remember that song that uh, Ann Durant used to sing, uh, always sang for the Raymond Singers and Band? And he'll do it again, duh. Just like Moses, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He goes, what are we doing? Thanksgiving looks back and sees things that God's done. Oh, Lord, just like you. You know, when I, back in, in 1985 when I was in this place and you came and you did this. And, and Lord, and, and you just, oh, thank you, Father. Glory be to God. And now I'm in this circumstance, praise God. And I know because you've done all the Now you're thanking God. Uh, for the present answer, but you're also acknowledging you, you have that understanding because he did all this in the past for you. You came to him in faith and he answered your prayer. Hallelujah. Can you say glory be to God? Um, and then request refers to specific requests for specific needs. Now what do you mean by general prayer? You, you know, you can go, prayer means talking to the Father. General prayer would be going just fellowshipping. Amen. Lord, you're good. I just uh, honor you. I love you. I praise you. I magnify you. Hallelujah. You're just going to have a time of fellowship today. That's, that's just general prayer. Lord, thank you for blessing, you know, uh, thank you for helping this or blessing that. But, you know, you're not real specific. It's just kind of a generalized prayer. Request or, Lord, I need $500 by Thursday. And I'm coming to you now. I'm putting that before the throne of God. I, I request that need met in Jesus' name according to the word of God. See, now you're in request. You're not just in general prayer. You're not in supplication. You're not in um, thanksgiving. You're in, I got I, I I to have an answer. And here it is. I'm calling it. I'm speaking it. Praise God. I'm specific. Okay? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And so here we, here we have... Um, be careful, uh, be careful for nothing, but by everything, by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made unto God. What happens? And the peace of God, which passes understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. See, when you get into the place where you are rejoicing in the Lord, and you're praying with prayers, supplications, thanksgiving, and requests, you're making those things known to God, and then God, the peace of God's going to come. Why? Wow. See, when you're at peace, what well, you're at rest. And another way to describe rest is peace. Amen. You're not struggling. You're not battling in the mind. Now you're going to have to battle with it. You're going to have to battle with your faith. Amen. There's no way around battling with your faith. We are called to fight the good fight of faith. We are told that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Not by God, but through God. 
What's that mean? See, the difference is God's not coming down and doing it. Now, unless you get a specific word from the Lord, you will not need to fight in this battle. That's not a general word for every battle that everybody's ever faced since then. If it were so, Paul would have written and said, hey, go back and watch Moses. You will not need to fight any of your battles. No, but he said fight the good fight of faith. Amen? The weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Now, I do believe God can speak to you and say, Dick, I know you've been, you've been coming to me. This battle's been going on, but I am telling you, you don't need to fight this battle. I got it. Yeah. If you get that from the Lord, then that's your word. But if you didn't get that from the, the Lord didn't speak, then don't, don't dream it up. People dream stuff up too. Remember the woman I told you about called me one to, to tell me the Lord showed her she was supposed to marry some man in the church? And I finally told her she was having a pizza dream. How did you know she was a pizza dream? It was either that or it was indigestion from something because the man was married. The Lord didn't tell her that she was going to get that man. That's a lying devil, just like an old hound dog, blue tick hound dog on the front porch on a hot summer day. Lying around. All that's all I did is lie around. Amen? Hallelujah. So, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, what? In the midst of difficult places and difficult times and difficult circumstances, there's a peace that could come on you. You're just standing there going, man, I got the peace. Don't know why I got the peace, but I got peace. Amen? Hallelujah. Shall keep. Now, God's, God, when God keeps you, hallelujah, God will keep the pause. He used a military term here, keep. <clears throat> which means to garrison, to guard, to keep, to arbitrate, to umpire. When you do these things, when you pray, the, the, the different types of prayer, when you're walking in the joy of the Lord, amen, then God will garrison your mind with peace. How many of you ever been to down the uh, Atlantic Beach area and, and gone out to um, uh, Fort Macon? Anybody, anybody here ever gone to, to Atlantic Beach and gone to Fort Macon? Anybody gone down to uh, Charleston and gone to Fort Sumter? How many in here have, thank you, Brother Bill. How many in here have ever been to one of the old uh, revolutionary Civil War forts that used to line our coast? Cap, Jesse, Belinda, Bill, me. Okay, it's four and a half hours to Atlantic Beach. You need to go see one of our old historic forts. Amen. It, the, uh, fort, um, fort Macon is right out there on, on the point uh, of the Emerald Isle Island. Which, you know, you cross over, you go to Atlantic Beach, or, you know, Moorhead City, then you cross over to Atlantic Beach, and then other ends in Emerald Isle. At the far north end, where the inlet comes in, Fort Macon sits. And it's an old earthen-type fort brick. You know, it had the, had, the, had the places, you know, the separations for the moat and all that kind of stuff. Uh, all right? It's a garrison. It was there to keep, it was built for Revolutionary Era. Hallelujah. Then it was used during, and all those were used during the Civil War. And, um, but it, 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 they're, they're there, they're, they're garrisons. I was going to use that as an example, but y'all don't even know what it looks like. Help me, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But they're all, they're, they're, they had, you know, like the outside walls, which were, were you know, they had cannon turrets and everything. And they had an inside wall with, with a place for a moat in between, you know, and uh, so forth. And uh, they're, they're, it's there to protect. It was there to garrison against the enemy, you know. And it's kind of like this. Your mind is in that middle part, and, and the outside part is the garrison. God's put a garrison around it. Hallelujah. Are you here around your mind? Praise God. What? To guard it? To keep it? So this word keep means a garrison. To guard. The peace of God will guard your mind. Man, your mind is where the devil tries to come and destroy you. He tries to get into your thought life. But if you'll, be, if you'll spend time rejoicing in the Lord and, and, and always rejoicing, and when you spend time in prayer, the four type, those four types of prayer we have here, the Bible says the peace of God, it passes. It just passes all understanding. Glory to God. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, keep your mind. Glory to God. Amen? Praise God. Actually, I left out something in, very, in verse 6. It says, be careful for nothing. Don't be anxious about anything. Don't be anxious about anything. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, we, we, we have to uh, stop being anxious. Prayer is a, is a solution to worry. Okay? So the verse 6 is, don't, don't be anxious. Pray. Talk to God. 
Now, how many know what worry or ang- being anxious about something is? I just messed up Bill's camera. Hallelujah. God, I delight. Messes up the whole thing. They, they go, don't do that, Pastor. I, I enjoy putting my D on the front row. Praise the Lord. Worry is negative meditation. See, Joshua said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein. You don't meditate on the negative. Where did those words come from anyway? If God's going to let the peace of God put a garrison and a guard around your mind, then that means the external faults that come to you that are being guarded against are coming from the enemy. And Satan is the enemy. It's Satan's thoughts and words that he's, remember this? He says that the, the, the shield of faith shall quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. He's throwing darts of thoughts at you to try to get them to implant in you to get you to meditate on them to rob you of your faith. So you lose your joy, you lose your communion with God, and you won't be effective in the kingdom. Somebody say, help me, Jesus. Praise God. But if you'll do what he told you to do, the peace of God is going to guard, going to guard your mind. Man, when you're talking with God, it's hard for the devil to come in there and you mess that up. When you're communing with the Father, it's hard for the devil to get in and tell you, God don't exist. What do you mean? I'm talking to him. Amen? Okay. Verse 8. Finally, brethren. Praise God. What sort of, so now we're going to get to the thought life. Okay, we're going, to, we're going to rejoice, we're going to pray, the peace of God is going to keep us, but now we're, with the, we're going to refer to our thought life. We're going to talk about our thought life. Amen? Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there's any virtue, if there's any praise, think on these things. Okay? Now he lists six types of, a rep- really, if we like to say a representative list of six things that the believer should meditate on. Uh, he, he probably could have gone further. <clears throat> um, true, Greek word referring to the truth in the widest sense. Jesus said he was the way, the truth, and the life. Um, God's word's truth. What sort of things are honest uh, relates to things worthy of honor or things worthy of reverence as opposed to a flippancy that lacks seriousness. Now, sometimes we get flippant. I'm, Charismatics were probably the worst bunch I've ever seen. And I was right in the middle of them. I was charismatic, praise God. You know? I'm, I'm not anti-charismatic, but I'm saying we got, we got flippant about the things of God. We got flippant about the name of Jesus. We got flippant about the Word of God. We didn't properly honor things. We didn't properly honor God. We got, we got almost sacrilegious in our approach to the... Well, I mean, you know... Uh, uh, I'm a believer, I have the righteousness of God, and you know, and I got, a, I got this cool relationship with the dude upstairs. I'm sorry. He's not the dude upstairs. He is the gl- glorious God, the creator of the universe. And let me tell you something. Every time Jesus appeared to somebody, I don't have any record. Everybody going, hey, it's the dude. Or it's the man of sin. No, they fell on, I mean, angels showed up, they fell on their face. The four beasts and the four and twenty elders, about every 15, 20 minutes, just get up out of their seats, take their crowns, throw them at the feet of the Lord, fall on their face, and say, worthy is the lamb. And you're going to go around and call him the dude. See, no, no flippancy. We're to honor. We're to have the right kind of honor. Can you say amen? Concerning the things of God, things worthy of honor or things worthy of reverence, we're not to be flippant or lack seriousness. Things that are just has to do with what is, is right according to God's standard that is spelled out in Scripture. We're not talking about social justice. You know, we've got to make everybody equal. Well, we've got to have social justice. If somebody doesn't have, you know, $20 million, or somebody does, we've got, we got to even that out. That's communism. Hello? And usually it, don't, it doesn't even work out that way. The communist, the, the Marxist, takes the 20 million and then gives both the people uh, something to live on while they 
the, the, uh, the intelligentsia live off of all the stuff. Don't, don't think it, it's never worked, never will work. Uh, Utopia was, was a dumb book. I believe it was inspired by the devil. You know, utopia is supposed to be such a great thing. But when you really look into it and all the Marxism and, and, and socialist stuff that's been built off of that, it's crazy. I said, it's crazy. But I like utopia. Well, enjoy it. But just understand the concept don't work. The only one who can make things equal is the Lord. It ain't going to work on a planet down here. Thank you. All right? So, um, just, it's not talking about social justice. It's talking about... Um, <clears throat> that's which the Lord and his word tells us is just or right. And then the next one is pure. And it means stainless or chaste. And it relates to things that encourage, encourage purity. Encourages purity. Now there's stuff going on in the school systems, man. You just look at it and you think, my God, that's not encouraging purity. You know what they should be teaching about sex education? abstinence in the story not go down to the office and you can get the birth control pill or you can get the condom and your parents don't have to know about it hello <clears throat> I mean all the stuff that they do now we're to be encouraged in purity well you can't do that without teaching morals you can't teach an amoral based mindset to children and expect them to come up with morals they'll be amoral they won't, be, they won't have morals we're to encourage ch uh, purity. We're to encourage chastity. Oh, you, you're a prude. No, no. I believe we should have husbands and wives that are married and have sexual relations and have children and, and enjoy each other's company. But only in that context. Nothing else. You're a prude. Nope, I'm smart. Smarter than you, apparently. Anyway. Uh, lovely means, it's a Greek word, means, um, refers to things that incite true love, not erotic behavior. We, we, we don't, we, we got such a society that just wants to encourage and incite erotic behavior all the time. You don't buy, you don't hardly buy anything anymore that's not sold with sex. And you'll, you'll see some stuff and you'll think, why are they advertising that with this? With sex? I don't get it. It ain't got nothing to do with sex. It's just like the commercials out now about, you know, the homosexual, uh, the lesbian couple buying the Greek yogurt. It had nothing to do with the yogurt. It had to do with presenting homosexual le lesbian couple. They got their wedding rings on. They're in bed together. They don't show you who the other person in bed is because they're covered up in sheet until the end of the commercial. As they talk about the Greek yogurt. And it's all that everybody knows. We support lesbians. Right. See? Uh, this is not, that's not lovely. That's not what the Greek, the Greek word does not mean to, to incite erotic behavior. It's, to, it's, it's a true love. Okay? And the only true love you're ever going to have is love that's within God's confines. Okay. Um, and then the word good report relates to things attractive in character. It's a good report. Now you can have bad reports. You can have bad behavior. Everybody say bad behavior. Okay. All right. So the, the here, here, so we, we're going to have rejoice the Lord. We're going to pray. The peace of God is going to guard us. We're going to keep our minds right. Okay. Now Paul shifts in the very next verse. It goes this. Those things <clears throat> which you have both learned and received and heard in me and seen in me do and the God of peace shall be with you. Now what is he doing? He says, now listen. Think this way now. Act it out. It's not just enough to think it. You've got to do it. Okay? Those things which you both have seen and heard and received and, and seen in me do. Okay? So he, he told us what we need to meditate on, and then he tells us the things you watched in my character, in my life, the way I've done, do it. Okay? But I rejoice the Lord greatly that now in your last, your care of me hath flourished again. Now, apparently, they had supported Paul financially in the ministry, and for some reason, they had stopped. Apparently, uh, possibly, one, one of the, the thoughts along this line is that the evil workers had gotten into the church and gotten to cut off their support of Paul. Okay? And he says, your, your care for me has flourished again. All right? And um, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. 
Now, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned that whatsoever state I am, bear with to be content or to be independent of the circumstances. The Greek bears that out very clearly. The, uh, the 20th century New Testament actually translates it that way. You know, um, that um, I've learned whatever state I am to be there with to be con uh, uh, content or to be independent of the circumstances. I found in a study thing a long time ago, and I'm, I, I've beat my head. I have looked. I cannot find it anywhere. I should have had it done a better job of writing it down and saving it. But there was one uh, study on this particular verse. It says, I've learned how to abound and not lose my head. I've learned how to um, be without and not lose my poise. In all things, I have learned to be independent of the circumstances. Okay? I can't find it. I wish I could. Boy, I wish I could find that. Because I would like to be able to, you know, to show where I got it from. But, you know, you can, you can see that in all the other things. You know, I've learned how to be a base. I've learned how to abound. Paul, now, why did you say that? He said, you, your care is picked back up for me. Now, look, guys, my trust has been in the Lord. Okay, so they didn't want to get overboard saying, you know, you're the reason I didn't make it. My trust is in the Lord. But, you know, God uses people. Okay. Hallelujah. I know how to abound and be, a, uh, actually, verse 11 and 12. Okay. I know how to abound, how to be a base. I know how to abound everywhere. And in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to hungry and to, uh, to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. What's that mean? Man, when it's, listen, folks, there's a time in, in the past few years when it was just pure hunk of dory around here. Money was sitting in the bank. Hello? Somebody call up and say, look, we need money. Okay, write them a check. And been that way lately. But I've abounded. And I've been a base. But I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. We can do all things through Christ, which strengthen us. He's our source. Can you say, he's our source? He's taking care of us in ways that I can't even figure out how it's going to happen. How's happening? Amen? Don't you like the other better? Sure! Who wouldn't? But you know what? As Paul said, I rejoice in my weaknesses that the power of Christ might rest upon me. Hallelujah. For when I'm weak, then am I strong. Now, I'm not saying God sent it. I'm just saying I rejoice because the, the only way through is the Lord. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Notwithstanding, you've done well. Now, so wait, he kind of kind of keep a balance here of thanking them for giving. Letting them know that it's the Lord that takes care of them, but not making them feel bad that he's saying that. Look, yeah, you've done well in communicating with me. Thank you. You know? And I know it's really because God's moved on your heart. He, you know, he's letting them know that he's not trying to. You get some people. They get, they get again, us charismatics. We can be obnoxious. Well, here, brother, here's $500. Well, thank you, brother. But God takes care of my needs. Yeah, he does. He spoke to that person and told him to give you $500. You know? We get kind of crazy with stuff sometimes. You know? And, uh, you know, but Paul's trying to balance the different, letting them know, I'm trusting God, but I am grateful for your gift. You know? You've done the right thing in doing it. So he's trying to keep that balance so they don't get arrogant or cocky about how great they've done. And at the same time, he doesn't put them down and make them feel like that they, they really weren't needed. So he's trying to balance that in these statements here. And so he says, you know, look, uh, notwithstanding, you did, you've done well that you communicate with me in my affliction. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving. Uh, this is a Greek term used in that era meaning debt and credit. Okay? But ye only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent unto me once and again, you sent again to my necessity. Not because I desired a gift, but I desired fruit that may abound to your account. In other words, he's letting them know, you're the only one that was in any sort of consistency taking care of my ministry. Thank you. Now, I've been trusting the Lord, but thank you. What you've done was God using you. Okay? You, but you, the Lord has used you to be a blessing. Thank you. All right. Um, but I have all and abound. I am full, having received a uh, Epiroditus, the things which were sent from you, an odor, a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. And he's saying God's taking care of it, but you sent it, and I'm thanking God for you sending it. Thank you. Okay? But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Praise God. Now, um, let me get here because this, this is a really good
thought on verse 19 here. Um, some people, now we interpret the King James language sometimes to mean the riches in a specific place, that is heaven. But this statement refers to the glorious bounty of God's riches. Hallelujah. God would recompense the Philippians because his resources are limitless. Hallelujah. So it's not just that, you know, all right, he, he's going to take something out of heaven. His, his, his resources are limitless. God has no lack. As a matter of fact, Jesus told one place, and he said, it's, it's in, I think it's the French Bible, and it's translated back in English. You know, whatsoever you ask the, uh, the Father my name, I, uh, I, I will do it. I, I believe it's the French Bible when you translate it in English. It says, uh, whatever you ask the Father my name, if I don't have it, I'll make it for you. Hallelujah. I like that. Well, his, his resources are limitless. There is no end to his ability to minister and take care of your need. Hallelujah. Can you say amen to that? Glory to God. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren which are with me greet you. All the saints salute you. Chiefly, listen to this, chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. People in, in, in Nero's household have become Christians. And then Paul sums it up as he does a lot of his letters. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Well, grace is central to the, to the teachings of Paul. It is a central core thing. Not crazy grace, biblical grace. I mean, it, Paul is, did preach that, and it's, it's central. It's core to his teachings was the grace of God. Hallelujah. And so he summed up the letter with all, you know, grace be unto you. Amen? We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the giving online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.